Are you tired of paying for streaming services and still getting ads like this? Well, you don't have to live like that anymore, and I'll show you how. Before we get started on configuring our ad blocker, these are some of the things that you'll need. A Raspberry Pi 02W, micro USB cord for power, and a micro SD card for loading the operating system. The Pi itself costs $15, whereas the other two are just some things I found around the house. If you don't have them, you can find them at any major retailer. So now that we have everything, let's get started. To begin your ad-free journey, you'll be going to raspberrypi.com. This is where we'll be installing the imaging software that will allow us to install the OS to the micro SD that you've, um, we'll be plugging into your Raspberry Pi. Here you can download for Mac, Windows, or Ubuntu, but today we'll be using Mac. Uh, so I'm gonna load up the software here. We have the imaging software. Yes, we accept. And so the model I recommend is the Raspberry Pi 02W. It's only $15. Uh, you can just run it off Wi-Fi and you don't, it doesn't require you to plug in through ethernet or anything like that. So it recommends the Debian Bookworm desktop. We will actually be installing the OS Lite, which has everything we could possibly need for the Pi-hole software. So that's what we'll be installing. Then we have our media, which is the micro SD card. We'll click next, edit the settings. So here, what you'll want to do to easily connect to your Raspberry Pi is I've set a host name. I'll just call it pihole.local. Uh, can set a username and password. So I'll just go ahead and do that. Configure WLAN. So this is where you'll be configuring your Wi-Fi. So for me, it's Abby's Dungeon. Then you can set your locale just for time zone settings and things like that. And set your country. So that should cover everything. You'll have your host name, your username and password, our Wi-Fi login. We'll enable SSH with password authentication. And that will be everything we need. So we're gonna go ahead and apply those settings and it's gonna erase and format the drive. There we go. And now it's gonna to write to the SD card. The write was completed. So now we have the Raspberry Pi OS along with all those settings that we've set to our uh, micro SD, so we can go ahead and remove that. Next, you're going to take your Raspberry Pi and micro SD and go ahead and slot that in. So, once that's plugged in, we will now power the Pi. And since it's on Wi Fi, it just needs power, no Ethernet or anything like that. And so, you'll have two ports here the left port is USB, right is power. Believe it or not, it's actually the USB port that provides power. So, we'll go ahead and plug that in and you'll see that a green light starts flashing. That means that's a good sign and it's going to the boot sequence. So we're gonna go ahead and let that go and uh, go connect to it over the Mac. Once the Pi hole has gone through a boot sequence for a couple minutes, it should be ready to SSH and connect to. So what we'll do is open up the terminal. Gonna increase the size so that's easier to see. And what we'll do is SSH You'll set your username you set in the settings at whatever the host name you set was. So for me, it'll be Pihole. So we'll go ahead and say yes here. Then you're going to need to type in your password you set. And there we are. Once you see this kind of like green text and Wes Ops at Pihole, this means you're actually connected. So what we'll want to do is run the uh, Pi-hole software command. You can see the command there. So we're going to paste that into the command line. And there it goes. It's going to go ahead and install all the necessary packages and 
software for PyHole to run, and from there we'll configure it. Once that sequence has completed, you should see this screen saying it's ready to turn your device into a network-wide ad blocker. So we're gonna hit enter, enter again. So from here, we need to set the PyHole to a static IP. In my specific case, I have it set up with Google Wi-Fi, like through Google Fiber and the Google Nest Wi-Fi Pros. For you, it could be going to your admin panel to configure this or through your TP-Link, Deco app, wherever it is you configure your, your network. So for me, I'll go to devices and I'll search for PyHole is what I set the name for. And you'll see you can set the IP address here. So we're gonna go ahead and pin that. And what this will do is set the Pi's uh, address to a static IP. So we can see here in the network settings, advanced. There's our Pi hole. Now it has a static IP, so we can continue with the set up here. So we'll go ahead and click continue. Well, you'll, you'll probably want to select Cloudflare. Generally one of the better DNSs you can choose from as the upstream provider. So we'll go ahead and click enter there. And here it's going to provide Stephen Black's unified host list. This is just a domain list that is going to block uh, ads from all these different networks, which will help us with the Disney Plus or HBO Max, any um, non-ad-free like tiers that we want to block the ads on. So there's other uh, lists that I can also provide if you want a more aggressive list, which will block more stuff for you. So we'll go ahead and click yes here. And for query logging, this is if you want to know which uh, ads kind of were blocked or which domains were requested on your network. We'll go ahead and say yes. Go ahead and hide domains and clients doesn't really make a difference which you choose. It just kind of determines how much will be written to your micro SD on the query logging. Now that the setup is complete, we can now go to the admin page for the PyHole. So we'll go ahead and go there at, for me, it'll be pyhole.local slash admin. So now we can log in, but we're gonna go ahead and actually set password it provides a password for you, but it's easier if we just set one ourselves that I'll actually remember. Okay, it requires pseudo privilege. So we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, your password's been set. And there it is. We can now see our admin page. It, it was not showing any traffic. Why is that? Well, what we'll need to do is go to our DNS configuration. So instead of using what your ISP or your network provider automatically sets, we're gonna go through the pie hole. For us, that will be this so I'll go ahead and paste that so now it's been set I'm gonna go ahead and save and there it is immediately you can start seeing traffic come into the admin page so this will show you queries that have been blocked where it resolved from you can see even memory usage on your pie hole with the load, how many queries per second, the domain lists and where that's coming from. And so this is where we could add another block list as well. I'll link a couple of those that I recommend uh, down below. One more component we'll need is to add this regex filter. This will specifically block the server that Disney Plus gets their ads from. So. I'll also post this in the description. You'll be able to copy 
So we're going to add that to deny domains. And now we're ready to test it on the TV. For $15, we finally get to experience our streaming services ad free, baby. And there you have it. Let me know if you all have any questions in the comments. Otherwise, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.